Okay, right, hello and welcome back to another video. So this week we're going to have a look at how we can uh, derive a uh, direction vector for when we're controlling a particle's uh, movement directly uh, and just controlling the position to use that with a velocity aligned sprites or in this case meshes. Um, right, well what does any of that mean? Well, here we have a simple burst effect. Uh, we're spawning these little arrows from a, a, a sphere uh, and firing them out radially. So we've got a shape location set to sphere with a radius uh, and we're adding velocity from the point. <coughs> and then in the mesh renderer, uh, we have our facing mode set to velocity. So if I change this back to default, you can see our little mesh um, arrows. Uh, and this is a very useful setting. We want to have uh, our particles aligned with the direction that they're moving. So we change to velocity alignment uh, and now we get our little mesh arrow particles um, firing out. And if we add something like gravity, you can see they'll be a bit better. As they're firing out and falling, they're obviously aligning themselves with that, that direction of travel. Very cool, very useful. Uh, but this is all being done using the forces and velocities. So here we've got a initial velocity uh, being added uh, and then we're solving forces. We're using gravity force. Uh, and that works, no problem with that if that's what you want to do. Um, but let's say we're making something like a homing missile. We want to take our particles, fire them outwards, I should turn my gravity, uh, and then attract them towards a point or have them kind of go towards a point that we've specified, like an enemy, a uh, place in the environment, something like that. Uh, and you can see it kind of works. Um, so I've specified a point 500 units away uh, in X, um, and I've got a attraction radius 750 so I'm attracting these particles uh, and my attraction strength is set to 5. Now this all works reasonably well but there are problems with this. Um, if I double my attraction strength obviously they're going to get pulled quicker but now they have this kind of weird overshooting effect. Um, again if I push that up higher you can kind of see we're not getting them to kind of like home in on a target instead we're just attracting them towards a point uh, and then the particle doesn't know when it's getting there. Uh, and if I change my lifetime, in this case everything's set uh, 5 seconds, if I randomise it 1 to 2, you can see now they're not even really getting to the to the impact, to the point, um, because they were going too quickly. So um, although you can do this with forces, uh, if you wanted to make some kind of like chasing effect, that might work quite well. Uh, a lot of the time if we're doing something like a homing missile or, or a kind of point to point effect, uh, we just directly control the position. Uh, and that's what we're going to do in this next example but we do that from scratch so starting here with an empty emitter uh, let's call this one class uh, yeah position there we go so we make this a gpu emitter with fixed bounds and we use local space just to make things nice and easy and we're just going to spawn some particles as a burst, something like 50, uh, and we're going to spawn them in a sphere. There we go. Uh, we use a mesh renderer, and I'm just going to use the debug arrow, and I'm going to put a material on it that glows. So I'm actually just going to use the wireframe material, just because it's an emissive material, make it a bit easier to see what's happening. So I have here a uh, 50 particles spawning on a sphere. And what I want to do is first, there's kind of two parts to this. So if I go back to this finished example, um, let's hide you for a second. Um, firstly, they spawn outwards in a circle or in a sphere, and then they get pulled towards that point. So there's two kind of bits of motion that we're going to control separately. So firstly is that sort of initial burst outwards, and then this pulling inwards. And we're going to do this controlling purely the, um, the locations. In the world. Something like this. Okay. So in our shape location, here we spawned in our, our shape. It, it's taken the sphere and the radius um, and it's actually output that directly to the position of our particles. Uh, and that's not what we want to do. We want to control that manually. But what it does do is it writes down here um, in our parameter writes. Um, some values, some bits of data that we want. And so shape position, this is going to be the 
um, the position on the sphere that this, the particle has sampled, so the module has sampled. Now in this case, it also writes it to the particle's position, um, which is why we're seeing them here, um, but we don't want that, but we do want that kind of like initial position. Where on the sphere did the particle initially come from? Uh, and what we can do in our particle update is we're gonna set new or existing parameter directly, and we're just gonna directly set the particle's position. Now, this will set everything back to zero. Now our sphere location is not doing anything. But if I were to say, use the um, stat context shape position, you can see now we're setting back to where they were. Now that's doing exactly what this module was already doing. Not particularly helpful. Um, but what we can do is we can do a, a alert position. So alert position will take in two different positions and a alpha value and we can blend linearly between those two. So A, our start position is going to be just 0, 0, 0. And B, our end position, I'm going to make that, again, that stack context shape position. And now if I put a value of 0 in, I get my particles at A, which is the origin. You can see them there. Uh, if I put a value of 1, we get our particles scaling outwards to the sphere. And I could overblow this and use bigger values. I can use smaller values that kind of thing. And what I can really do is I can do a curve. And so if I use just a default linear curve outwards, you can see we're animating our, our particles to go from the center outwards. Um, cool, that works. Uh, you can see they're not velocity aligned. I mean, they're not set to be velocity aligned, but even if I set them to be velocity aligned, you can see they're, um, they're not, not correct, not working like that. Um, and that's what we're gonna fix later on. Okay, so here we're lerping just the position of our particles uh, from the center outwards. And we want to do the same thing again from sort of the, the, the exploded sphere to our target. And so what we're going to do is rather than setting the position of our particles directly here, particle position, I'm going to create a new parameter. So if I just cut that, control X, uh, and then remove this input, I'm going to create a new parameter of type position uh, and it's not going to be called position it's going to be called let's call it sphere position something like that and we can just paste that back over the top and there's our sphere position cool um, now that we've got this we can do another lerp and we're going to lerp from the exploded sphere position to our sort of target position our final position so uh, we'll create another module, uh, another set new uh, parameter, and I'm going to call this, um, well, I'm going to create another position parameter, and I'm going to call this one uh, target position. Same idea, we're going to do a lerp position between two positions, and the position input in A, rather than being the origin this time, is going to be this sphere position, so the output of our previous module. And then our final position here, this is our target. So let's do 500 units in X again. And so with our alpha at zero, oh, it's not doing anything. Why not? Well, I haven't actually told our particles to use this target position. So we'll do another set new existing. And this time we want to do position. Now you have to be very careful with this. We're not doing a new parameter with type position. We're using the core parameter particles position. So it's a uh, parameter here that's called position and is of type position. Uh, it's very easy to sort of mix these two up. And so here, if we make this the output of our target position, what we should see is it's scaling upwards. If I set this to one, it's going to move our particles to that 500. And we can kind of control halfway through. So now it's doing a halfway between the, um, the sphere extending and that location. Uh, and again, if we make this a curve, more sprites over time. And so now they're scaling outwards and then they're scaling inwards. And we can control these curves as well. So we've got one lerp that controls our spherical explosion at the beginning. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make these uh, curve values. Let's get rid of that one. And let's say after 0.25 seconds, or rather a quarter of the particle's lifetime, I should say, because it's not a particle in seconds, it's in percentage of lifetime. So now it very quickly bursts outwards and then gets drawn into the other one. 
and we can do something similar here where don't pull in until 0.1 something like that and we can adjust the curves and all that kind of stuff so hopefully you can see how we can adjust those adjust those settings Just try this at minus 500 there we go just to be clear that they're not velocity aligned you can see here now they're going backwards um, if I change my target to say something in Y you can see they're going sideways we're not able to do that um, we're not able to control uh, or we're not controlling the alignment of our particles yet we're only controlling the position cool so how do we do it? How do we control the alignment? How do we get the um, the velocity vector? Well, it's not really a velocity in this case because we're controlling it manually with position. Uh, but how do we can control or how do we get access to um, to that direction? Now, the way I'm going to do this, I'm just going to do some quick uh, quick drawing. Um, if we have a position, I'm going to call this P zero, and we have another position in this case P one. So this is where the particle is in this frame. And in the next frame, it's going to be here. We can work out the direction between them, and that's going to be our velocity vector, or a, the equivalent of our velocity vector. So if I draw my little arrow. You can see between this point and this point, it's now here. If we did another point there, we want to align with that that vector, and it's very simple. Uh, the vector between them is just p1 minus p0. That will give us the vector, and if we just want the direction of that, we can normalize it. And we'll just get the uh, the vector between them. Okay, so we know where our particles moving towards because that's the logic we've written. So in our update stack, we're going to say right at this time or at this percentage time of our particle's lifetime, um, we want to save that position um, and we want to update the position. And it's going to go through all this logic of the multiple lerps uh, to do that. Now, if we were using solve forces and velocity such as here, one of the modules or one of the parameters that it outputs um, is here, our velocity and things. Um, we have a previous frame, previous position, particles, previous position. Um, and so this comes from in solve forces and velocity, um, position, pre solve position, it's called here, so it's called previous. Um, but we're able to use that previous position. So we're able to calculate where our particle was, where our particle is, and we'll use that in our, in our calculations. This is all handled for us by solve forces and velocity. In our case, we're building this ourselves. So what we're gonna do, well, in our update stack, here, our, um, our logic for where the particle's going to be, we only update the position here at the third, third module. So what I wanna do is I wanna save the particle's current position at the start of update then do my logic for where it should be and then update where it will be. And so we kind of get to save out the data here first, then do this logic and then save out this data. And we're not able to use that to calculate this um, direction. Okay, so let's do this. So again, set new particle or new parameters. Um, make sure it's the first thing before the other logic. And we're gonna save a new position parameter in this case, I'm going to call it previous position, and it's just going to be the particles position. So make sure that we're saving the, um, again, this time it's the particles position, not a new parameter called position. So we have our previous position, we have our updated position. If we now do a mesh orientation, make sure that's at the end after being moved. Uh, the orientation method is going to be set to orient to vector and the vector we want to, put to, to point towards, um, we're going to normalize and subtract. So subtract two positions and then normalize it. We really don't need to normalize it, but it's good um, kind of good practice to, to normalize your vectors when you're just using them as orientations. Um, so what the two vectors were, in this case, it's gonna be position and previous position. So if I take my position, Again, making sure that we're using the right parameters. So particles position, subtract 
applied to its previous position. And there we are. You can see now, using those two bits of data, the where the particle is now, where the particle was at the start of the frame, where it is at the end of the frame once it's been updated, we can subtract the two, um, and we are now getting a effectively velocity aligned mesh particle. Um, still no velocity being calculated, it's all just done directly on particle movement. Uh, and what's nice about this, if I go back into initialize, uh, if I set my random particles, random lifetime, doesn't matter how fast the particle's moving, because we're directly controlling the position based on the particle's life, we're not using any forces, it's really nice to be able to control, um, or a nice easy way to control that kind of movement. Okay. If I change my target position, now we could make a user parameter for this, we could plug in an enemy, we could plug in a dynamic parameter, however we want to do this. But whatever I use, it's going to automatically update because we're using that previous position uh, and the current frame position. And we can also scale in these things or adjust their lifetime and color, that kind of stuff as well. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Um, very nice way to control exactly where a particle is, where a particle uh, will end up, um, and then using the previous frame data, saving that out at the start of the update stack to then use in our, our orientation calculation to get this, uh, this kind of effect. All right, uh, if you've got any questions about this or any other type of Niagara uh, Unreal 5 type questions, please do get in touch. Um, check out my courses on Gumroad and Udemy. Um, I'll go into this kind of thing in a lot more detail. Uh, and a big thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel. And I'll see you all next time with more little Niagara tips.